The Romance of the Ranchos. San Pedro, 1800. Smugglers captured in attempt to land in harbor. San Pedro, 1846. Americans killed in battle of Dominguez Ranch. San Pedro, 1940. 18 million tons of shipping passed through Los Angeles Harbor. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos. Recreating for you the vividly colorful yesterdays in the history of Southern California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, takes us back to the days of the Dons to reveal another fascinating story. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles believes that some knowledge of the historical background of the land we live in, of the hardships and heroism of the pioneers whose efforts have given us our great heritage, not only will make of us better citizens, but will also add to our appreciation and enjoyment of the advantages of living where we do. The records of the Title Insurance and Trust Company contain verification of the historical facts that provide the framework for our story tonight. But to most of us, facts and dates that are buried in files or history books are dull. It is to make those dry records live and breathe, to recreate for you the true interest, adventure, excitement, and romance that actually attended the events themselves that these programs are presented. With tonight's story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senores y senores. Our story tonight is concerned with one of the first and perhaps greatest of the early California ranchos, the Rancho San Pedro. And two, it deals with the beautiful Rancho Palos Verdes and the prolonged dispute over it, which split two distinguished families. Let's go back through the years and relive the romance of the ranchos. <laughs> It was in 1784 that Juan José Dominguez, soldier of Spain, received permission from his bluff old commander, Governor Pedro Fajes, to saddle with his stock on a piece of land overlooking San Pedro Bay, first called the Bay of Smokes by Cabrillo in 1542. And so, one day, the soldiers of the Presidio gathered to watch a strange procession. Come, vaqueros, keep them moving. We have a long journey ahead of us. There is no time to waste. Hola, Juan! This been a job for a soldier. This one you've been a tender of cows. <laughs> See what? Is this what you have come to? Uh, you are just jealous. Jealous? How <laughs> jealous is this? <laughs> Tending cows is a job for those timid ones. We have no stomach for a man's work fighting. Oh, you are behind the times, mi amigo. Where would Spain be today if she did not have builders as well as soldiers? Eh? So you are building something now, eh? See, si, I'm a pioneer. I'm going to help build a great new land for our king. Oh, he shall be pleased to hear it, I'm sure. Oh, stupid <laughs> old. This is no joking matter. You do not seem to realize that now I'm a man of importance. <laughs> ah, see, si. but you have always been a man of importance, Virgo. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I bother with you. Adios, senor. Oh, wait, wait. Juan, mi amigo. Hey, <laughs> see, Juan, we were just having a joke. A bad <laughs> joke, senor. See, si, but you forgive us, no? Well... <laughs> <laughs> See, of course. <laughs> bueno, we are really proud of you. A great landowner now. Oh, no, I do not own this land. I have just been given permission by Don Pedro to settle here. Ah, but you will own it and have a great rancho. See, I hope so. Uh, senores, you must come and visit me, eh? Uh, in that wilderness? God forbid that we are ever sent there. <laughs> senores, it's no wilderness. It's good fertile land. There is the Pueblo of Los Angeles. Uh, good... Wilderness, nevertheless. But perhaps we shall visit you after all. When you have built a new country for our king. Oh, <laughs> you are impossible. You keep me from my journey with such nonsense, eh? I must go, senores, and drive my cattle to the river San Gabriel. And someday you shall find that I'm the one who's at the last laugh. 
Adiós, señores, adiós. Hasta la vista, don Juan. Hasta la vista, mi amigo. Eh, vaya candidato, mi amigo. Hasta la vista. Adiós. And Don Juan José Dominguez was a pioneer. At the age of 65, the old soldier retired to the rancho called San Pedro, bounded by the old course of the San Gabriel River on the east, by the ocean on the west and south. For 20 years, he tended the busy routine of running his peaceful domain. But there were occasional brief moments of excitement on the Dominguez property. For many years, Spain had a law forbidding trading with any foreigners. But it didn't stop some citizens of Los Angeles from engaging in unlawful commerce. And so, once in a while, in the dead of night... I will feel better when we are safely anchored. This harbor is full of sandbar. We are almost in far enough. I can see the outline of the land. Go far. Put out that light. We do not want to be seen by the watch. Watch! That is enough. Draw up, anchor. We oui. are the boats ready? We oui. the goods are loaded. Very well. Lower away. I will stay aboard, Monsieur. You take charge of the landing party. Hey. Lower away, men. And quiet. They hang smugglers in these parts. What hour is it, Pedro? I cannot say. The moon is hidden. Perhaps two hours to dawn. Hmm? Such a life. I should be glad to get back to the barracks. Ramon? See? Si. Is that the ship in the harbor? Where? There. I can just make out the outlines through the mist. See? Si. It is a ship, all right. Can you make out what kind? By her lines, I cannot tell what ship it is. Except that it is not Spanish. Uh, smugglers? See, si. Look. Three small boats nearing the shore. Hurry, Pedro. Warn the guard. Run. Ahoy! Ah, there they are. The signal. Uh, put in at the small landing. Uh, quiet now, men. They are right under the noses of the guards. Ah, oh, senores. You are here at last, huh? Like Spatch for last week. Uh, we, we had unfavorable winds. Uh, has anyone seen us? <laughs> there has been no alarm. Uh, you have the goods, hmm? We... Three boatloads, silk, shawls, shoes. Are your skins ready? Oh, si, senor. Pile there on the shore. Ah, good. I shall inspect them any moment. All right, men. Start unloading. Uh, uh, I, surrender uh, if you value your life. Soldiers, uh, into the boats, men. Hurry. Uh, I have to uh, surrender. Uh, 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 hurry, uh, 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 Foreign smugglers conducted a thriving business for many years. Sea otter skins, worth 100 cattle hides with the usual cargo. But life on Rancho San Pedro was largely serene and peaceful. Until, in 1805, misfortune came to Don Juan José Dominguez. One day, he called his friend Manuel Gutierrez to him. Buenos dias, Don Juan. You wish to see me? Buenos dias, Manuel. Si, I want you to see this, please. A document? Si, read it. For his friendship and faithful service, I, Juan José Dominguez, concede to Manuel Gutierrez a life estate in Rancho San Pedro, as long as he shall... Senor! Si, that is what I want. Then Juan, what can I say? How can I thank you? Never mind that, Manuel. The rancho is in good hands. I know that you will keep it well for my nephew, Cristobal, who is to be my heir. eh? Keep it well, but, senor, you are the one who manages Rancho San Pedro. No more, mi amigo. Tomorrow I leave for San Juan Capistrano to spend the rest of my days with Cristobal. He's stationed there now, eh? I do not understand, Don Juan. You're leaving? I'm an old man, Manuel. I cannot hope for much more time. Nonsense. No, mi amigo. I, I wish it were. Besides, Manuel, uh, uh, where is my tobacco? Your tobacco? Why, why is that in front of you on the table? Oh, I cannot seem to... Will you please hand it to me? I don't want it. It is right here under your nose. I... Here it is. Gracias, mi amigo. But Don Juan, you can't. No, mi amigo. I can't see. I'm blind. <laughs> 
Juan Jose Dominguez, blind and aged, retired to spend his last days quietly at the Mission San Juan Capistrano. In 1809, the old soldier died, leaving Rancho San Pedro to his nephew Cristobal, who was to share possession with Manuel Gutierrez as long as Juan's friend lived. For a time, all went well. Then, in 1821, Mexico gained her independence, and a young lieutenant was sent north from San Diego to command the troops at the Pueblo de Los Angeles. One day, the soldier approached Manuel Gutierrez. Oh, Juan Dolores El Tulvede, you're the new commander at Los Angeles? See, si, Don Manuel. And you're going to stay? I hope so. I like this land. I would like to settle here. You brought your horses and cattle? See, si. and that is why I've come to see you. I must find some place to keep them. I thought perhaps you might help. See, si, of course, I know just the place. Part of our land is not yours. You can keep them there. Where is this land? Above La Cañada de Palos Verdes. The hills above the bay. Ah, that is wonderful land. The hills overlooking the sea. Perhaps not as fertile as the rest of Rancho San Pedro. That is why we have not used it. But fine pasture land, nevertheless. And I have your permission to move my cattle in? See, si, of course. Do so right away. <laughs> So Juan Dolores Sepulveda settled his 800 head of cattle on Rancho Palos Verdes, and thereby started the dispute which was to continue for a quarter of a century. Very quickly, Cristobal Dominguez protested. Señor Sepulveda. Si, Don Cristobal Dominguez, is it not? Si. Welcome, senor. I regret I did not come here for a social call, senor. I come to make a protest. Protest? About my using the land of Palos Verdes? Si, senor. There ought to be but two branding irons for the cattle of this rancho. Yours and Senor Gutierrez, huh? Exactly, Senor. Therefore, I ask you to withdraw your herds from my land. But, Senor, I have been looking into this question. Is it your land? But of course. This is the Rancho San Pedro. Is it? Many years ago, the governor gave you permission to live on Rancho San Pedro. But nothing was said of these hills. The river San Gabriel was mentioned, the ocean, sea. But it would seem to me that these hills are outside of the boundaries of what was given to you. Senor, in all these years, no one has ever questioned the Dominguez family's rights to these lands. It is well known that they are ours. On the contrary, I believe it is high time somebody did question your rights. Where are your title papers? Show me the title papers to the hills of Palos Verdes. Title papers? I, I do not need title papers. But you do. I shall see that you do. You do not and you never have used this land. You have plenty elsewhere. That does not matter. I demand that you remove your horse from my land. And I will not. Even if it is your land, Don Manuel has given me permission to stay. Senor, I shall petition the governor to run you off. I, too, can petition the governor, and I shall ask him to grant me title to this land, the hills of Palos Verdes. <laughs> Both Dominguez and Sepulveda kept their promises. The governor did nothing about Cristobal's plea to remove Sepulveda, and the dispute flared on. Sepulveda, in an effort to speed action on his claim, journeyed to the capital at Monterey to talk with the governor. On the return trip, a tragic destiny took him to the Mission de la Purisima Concepcion, where he planned to stop for a rest. Hmm. This is very strange. There's not a soul in sight. Perhaps some service is going on inside the mission, and all the Indians are there. Perhaps, see. Si. But perhaps there is something wrong. Perhaps we should not go in. Oh, nonsense, Don Juan. What could be wrong? I would not think of going on. We need rest. The horses need water. Come, we're almost to the gate. Once inside, you shall see that nothing is wrong. Perhaps. But I somehow have a feeling I do not like this. <laughs> Life on that lonely rancho of yours has made you jumpy. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. whoa. Senor, look at those people lying on the ground. And the blood. Indians. Indians on the warpath. Turn, run for it. They are coming at us. Look out. Oh. Senor, Senor. You killed them, you heathens. You killed one, say, Pulvada. You... Juan Dolores Sepulveda had the misfortune to stop at the Mission de la Purisima Concepcion 
the day in 1824 on which the neophytes were in revolt, and he was one of those who lost their lives in a massacre. Behind him, he left five children to continue the fight for the Rancho Palos Verdes, Juan, Ignacio, Diego, Jose, and Maria Teresa. Death came a year later to Cristobal Dominguez, too, and his sons, Manuel and Nazario, carried on the Dominguez side of the quarrel. It was Manuel who received a messenger one day in 1827. You have a message for me? Si. Sí. It's from Don Juan Sepulveda. Sepulveda? Si. What could you wish to tell me? That he has received word from Monterey, from Governor H. Juan Diaz. So, at last he has been told, eh? At last he must vacate our land. No, no, senor. The governor has given a Sepulveda a provisional grant to Rancho Los Palos Verdes. <laughs> According to a hand-drawn map dated some 32 years later, 1859, when this first provisional grant was confirmed to Jose Loreto Sepulveda, final surveys set the area of Rancho Los Palos Verdes at 31,629 and 43 hundredths acres. Its eastern boundary was approximately the line of the present Figueroa Street. From the ocean between San Pedro and Wilmington to the intersection of Figueroa and Sepulveda Boulevard, where the map shows a dry lake to have existed. From there, the boundary, following such markings as four rocks, three rocks, a pile of stones, ran roughly westward to strike the ocean a few miles south of the present city of Redondo Beach. Rancho Los Palos Verdes was completely surrounded on both north and east by Rancho San Pedro, granted by Manuel Dominguez. Early day maps of both ranchos are in the files of Title Insurance and Trust Company, together with volumes of data and title records extending right up to the close of business today. These records enable Title Insurance and Trust Company to issue policies of title insurance for your protection. It is such protection that makes real estate so readily marketable and so acceptable as security for loans. Governor Echandia's provisional grant did not settle the quarrel between the Dominguez and Zapulveda families. Even after Governor Figueroa in 1834 settled the matter by arbitration and fully granted Palos Verdes to the Sepulvedas, there was bitter feeling still. But life went on. And San Pedro began to gain its reputation as a great seaport. Tall-masted sailing ships from Boston and New York sailed around the Horn to drop their cargoes and to fill their holds with great stacks of hides and heavy barrels of tallow. Sailors called it the hell of California because in loading and unloading their cargoes... Uh, 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 how much farther is it? Another, another hundred yards. Straight up. Uh, I can't make it. I tell you, I can't make it. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, man. Rest for a minute. Uh, Rest and we'll try it again. Uh, where are we taking this? Uh, see that little Dobie warehouse on top of the cliff? Yeah, that's it. How can they expect any human being to carry these heavy boxes straight up the face of a cliff? I don't know. It's not the steepness I mind. It's these slippery rocks. It's a hundred feet straight down. Hey, you men! What do you think you're doing? Having a tea party? Uh, Come on, get that box up. Hurry up, or you'll be asking for the last. Aye, aye, sir, right away. Uh, Come on, Tommy. We'll make it this time. Uh, I can't do it. I can't. My, my hands are bleeding now. Come on. It's better than the lash. Remember that. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll try it, kind of boy. Here we go. <coughs> yep. Watch your step. <coughs> These rocks are slippery. Do it. I'm slipping. I can't get my belt. Look out. Hold on, Tommy. Look out. <laughs> the sharp cliffs of San Pedro took their toll in sailors. But the port continued to grow, and the hills of the Rancho Los Palos Verdes grew in importance. And because the boundaries had not been measured off and formal possession given by the authorities, many regarded Sepulveda's grant as little more than a scrap of paper. Some of them, eyeing the valuable property, began an attempt to move in on it. And so Juan and Jose Sepulveda again sent a petition to the capital. One day in May 1846, a rider raced into the Rancho Los Palos Verdes. Oh, oh, senor! I bring news from me, Pablo. Where's you, senor? News? I see. A letter for Don Juan Sepulveda. Huh? Uh, Pedro, bring Don Juan. 
and tears on Jose to come to. I should both want to see this. It's news from Monterey, from Governor Pio Pico. Uh, Senor, have you uh, any other news, eh? Any other news? Oh, see. Si. Uh, well, what, what is it? Well, nothing very much. The governor had a ball. <laughs> oh, is that all? Oh, oh, see, si, there was something else. <laughs> eh? I almost forget. The Americanos have declared war on Mexico. So, uh, when was this? Mm, last month, I think. Well, well, and they always seem so friendly. <laughs> but I don't suppose that will be much to us. We are here. No, I don't suppose so. Oh, here comes someone now. I will give him the letter. I must turn away, senor. Adios. Adios. Ramon, the letter. It is from the governor. See, si, Don Juan. Here it is. Uh, at last. Have you called Don Jose? Si, I told Pedro to call him. Senor, is it good news? Si, Ramon. Very good news. Pio Pico has confirmed our grant to the Rancho Los Palos Verde. A few days later, Mayor Cota of the Pueblo de Los Angeles conducted a colorful ceremony at the rancho, ending with Don Jose and Don Juan stepping across the imaginary line which marked their precious land. Each picked up a branch from a shrub and broke it. Don Juan, Don Juan Sepulveda. Senor, Don Manuel Dominguez, you here? See, si, Don Juan, and not for any reason you might think. Governor Pico has confirmed your grant to this land, and so... Our quarrel is finished. It's not right that our two families should be enemies. It has lasted too long already. You are right, Don Manuel. I harbor no ill will for you no and right. yours. No right for you. Let us forget the past. See, there is no reason why we should not from now on live peaceably together as neighbors. More than that, as friends. And here is my hand on it. Senor, this makes me very happy. No more than I, mi amigo. The dispute was forgotten at last. And now the Sepulveda and the Dominguez families were destined to live peacefully together, to work together, and to fight together. For the war with the Americanos was not the isolated quarrel many Californians imagined. It came home to them when the forces of Stockton and Fremont began the occupation of their province. They fought a losing battle, but they fought hard. Manuel Dominguez was one of those who stood on Rancho San Pedro to confront the American Captain Gillespie's troops as they retreated from Los Angeles. Many Americanos were mowed down by the bronze four-pounder called the Old Woman in the Battle of the Dominguez Ranch. And later, some were buried on Dead Man's Island in the San Pedro Harbor. But the Americanos eventually conquered, and once more, California was a land of peace and industry. Both Sepulveda's and Dominguez land grants were confirmed by the United States Board of Land Commissioners. Both families prospered with the growing prosperity of Los Angeles. Sepulveda's stages carried passengers from the harbor to the growing metropolis. Sure. Most always have a race to the Pueblo. Come on, boys. I got $10 bet on our stage. Let her rip. And Manuel Dominguez rose in public affairs to become a member of Los Angeles Ayuntamiento, first alcalde and judge, territorial representative, and captain of a military company. And part of the Rancho San Pedro he sold, a part which quickly became San Pedro Newtown, and later, Wilmington. Why, sure, this town's going to grow. This is going to be the new seaport for Los Angeles. We cut six miles off the stage lines from San Pedro, and with this new breakwater from Rattlesnake Island to Dead Man's Island, we'll have a real harbor. The rivalry between San Pedro and Wilmington continued for a time until Civil War trade sent the new port speeding far ahead of the older town. Camp Drum was established there, and all supplies for the troops stationed there went through Wilmington. Prosperity brought rising prices on the waterfront. What? A dollar and a half to go out into the harbor to my boat? Oh, that's ridiculous. All right, then, mister. Maybe you'd rather swim. Many famous in early California annals were to be found among the pioneers of the new port. J.G. Downey, W.T.B. Sanford, B.D. Wilson, and Phineas Banning, whose hometown of Wilmington, Delaware, furnished the new name for the new San Pedro town. With their help, the port grew steadily until, in 1869... 
There she is, the first steam train into Wilmington from Los Angeles. Boy, we got a real city here now. When the railroad was extended to San Pedro, it was the older town's turn to grow. In 1882, the present city was laid out, and in 1888, it was incorporated. For the next 20 years, the two towns grew with the steadily progressing metropolis of Los Angeles. And then, in 1909, a group of Los Angeles men stood on the bluff overlooking the harbor. Gentlemen, this is the harbor of Los Angeles, whether we own it or not. This is where our shipping must come. Well, we couldn't ask for a better one. Uh, Ah, couldn't we? Now, look down there, gentlemen. Does that look like the harbor of one of the nation's greatest cities? Will those docks and warehouses be able to accommodate the goods that this country of ours is going to produce? Will that harbor hold the ships of the world that'll be coming here? Well, that's right. We're going to grow, gentlemen. Our growth will be stunted unless our harbor grows with us. In my mind, I see miles of docks with facilities for the biggest ships the world can build. And by Jupiter, I'm going to do my best to see that they're put there. A few men of vision saw the Los Angeles Harbor that could be, and largely through their efforts, it has come into its full realization. The first step was the incorporation of San Pedro and Wilmington into Los Angeles. Then, funds were appropriated for harbor development, channels were dredged, breakwaters constructed, docks and warehouses were built on Rattlesnake Island, now called Terminal Island, and historic Dead Man's Island was leveled beneath the waves. Rancho San Pedro became the thriving cities of Wilmington, Lomita, Torrance, Gardena, and Compton. Rancho Los Palos Verdes became San Pedro and the beautiful Palos Verdes estates. And high on the hills, which caused the dispute between the Sepulveda and Dominguez families, you may today look out over one of the greatest harbors in the Western Hemisphere. Such is the story of progress, and such is the romance of the ranchos. In just a moment, Frank Graham will tell us about next week's story. Between 1900 and 1940, the number of separate assessed parcels of real estate in Los Angeles County increased from 91,000 to 1,512,000. This is an increase of 1,421,000 in the number of land ownerships the title insurance and trust company must keep track of daily. The company has taken this never-ending expansion of work into account. Its policy through nearly 50 years of service has been to maintain an organization system of records at all times adequate to offer complete title service and genuine title protection to anyone who buys, sells, lends, or borrows on real estate within the territory it serves. And now, Frank, what's the story for next week? The land on which stands the present city of Whittier was once called the Rancho Paso de Bartola, and it was the home of a famous governor of California, Don Pio Pico. His story and that of the happenings on this land form an exciting chapter in the romance of the ranchos. So until next week, then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, comes to you each Wednesday at the same time. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. K and.